Hey everybody, I'm excited for this first video in our new playlist, Programming Concepts. We will regularly add new videos to this playlist that go over the core features of different programming concepts in different languages. To start, let's start with a traditional for loop in Java. So the syntax of a traditional for loop in Java is for, we declare some kind of variable, typically we have i equals zero, most commonly seen, and we say, well, i is less than something, here we'll go ahead and say 10, and then i plus plus. And then inside the loop, we're going to do something. So let's just do a sys out here. And let that load. There we go. And we'll print out i is equal to and concatenate i right there. So if we run this, we're going to go ahead and see uh, 0 through 9 printed out there, right? i equals 0 all the way through i equals 9. But let's take a closer look at how this actually works. So when we declare a for loop, there are three different components up here inside these parentheses, right? We start with the for keyword. And then the first component here is any variable declaration that we need to make. Now we could put multiple variables there. We could say i equals zero and j equals 10, right? So we could go ahead and add something here plus j. And we'll see since we're not changing j, j is gonna be the same each time, right? There's i and then there's j. So this first section here before the semicolon is where we declare any variables. The second section is a Boolean expression. It's the condition that keeps the loop iterating. So while, while i is less than 10, then we are gonna perform an iteration. And in that iteration, we're gonna jump over here to the loop body and run any code between this opening and closing curly brace. So we only have one line here, but we could have as many lines of code as we want, and all those lines would execute while i is less than 10. Now we jump over here to the third part, and this third part, it runs at the end of each iteration. And it is the uh, post iteration, or usually we use it to increment something, most commonly i. So what happens is, when the code's running, we hit here, for loop, this variable's declared, we'll get rid of this j for now. So this variable's declared, we have i equals zero, the condition is checked, is zero less than 10, that evaluates to true. So we skip this part and jump straight to the body. We run all the code in the body. And once the body is done running, we jump back up here and increment i. Then, for every iteration after that, we skip this first part. We just check the condition. Is zero, it was zero, now it's one. Is one less than 10? Yes, it is less than 10. Run the body, jump back up here, increment it. It's now equal to two. Is two less than 10? Yes, it is run the body all the way until we get to nine and then nine becomes 10. And when we check here, is 10 less than 10? No, it's not. 10 is equal to 10, but it's not less than 10. So we don't run the body anymore. We jump outside of it and we run whatever code follows the loop. So if we do another sys out here, we can say loop ended, save that and run it. We see that once it's done, the code executes outside of there. So we can even take a closer look at this, debug this, I'll double click here, go into our debugging perspective. And we can see, there it's running, it stopped right there. We can watch what's happening here. So I'm gonna step over. So i right now is equal to zero. Step over again, it prints it out. And now i is still equal to zero right now. If I hover over it, we see i is equal to zero. But if we step over again, that means this has now ran. And we've got i up here, we can see the value, it's now equal to one. So we step over it again, we print out the next line as we see down here. We jump back up to here, i is still zero until we run that line again. So step over it, i, or it was one, now it's two. And that will go on and on and on until we get to, let's get here, we're at nine. Right, we jump back up there. When we run it this time, 
i becomes 10, it checks again, 10 is not less than 10, so we're outside of the loop. The loop ends when this Boolean expression evaluates to false. We run the last line, and that prints out our loop ended, and then we're done. So that's how a, a traditional for loop works. Play that all the way through. That's how a traditional for loop works. We, loop, we use loops anytime we need to perform code over and over and over again, right? To iterate or perform the same set of code multiple times. So we don't have to repeat that code uh, line after line. We also use loops anytime we need to perform an operation for each element inside of a collection or an array of some sort. Uh, because again, we're performing the same actions over and over again. So loops are very useful, especially traditional for loops, if we need to keep track of some kind of index um, and perform our operations over and over again.